Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, Goedemorgen. Um, I'd like to uh, suggest that the reference to the hotel was for those of you who had too many welcoming receptions last night. Um, and I'm sure that we'll have a very productive couple of days. I'd like to begin by thanking uh, Siggy Gruber, uh, Jacques uh, uh, and her team, and my colleague Christina, who will speak with you, Ninka and Wolfgang, and their team uh, for pulling this extraordinary event together. I think what we're at today is we're really at a historic moment in the way in which we work together around uh, the Atlantic North and South uh, as a community, both of scientists and policy makers. Um, it really is one of those days where, as we say on the program today, we are making that vision that has begun in conversations in different parts of the Atlantic uh, a reality. We're only two years on uh, from the Galway Statement, from where many of you, the scientific community here, set out a very clear and shared vision as to how we needed to work to understand, map, uh, uh, and explore in a sustainable way our inner space. Uh, I think today is a bit like a Cape Canaveral moment in the 60s where people begin to explore the inner space that we really haven't thought about or understood and which has such an influence uh, on all our lives uh, in the Atlantic, East and West, North and South. We see since Galway two years ago the Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance, which is widening. You look at the, the, the uh, scientific and policy community, the countries and member states and regions who are here today, and deepening in terms of the agenda, uh, the structuring effects that we see every time uh, we meet uh, as groups in different formations. We see scientific agendas being shared, uh, ship times being discussed, and mapping opportunities, different ways of actually bumping into people that we didn't realize were working in adjacent areas. So it's, it's, it's extraordinary what has happened in this short period of time. We've seen also the deepening of the political leadership uh, which is being shown. We see the flags that are here this morning, and I'm sure when we have an event like this in the future, there will be a number of other flags that will join them, hopefully. Uh, we see the leadership from uh, the Europe and from uh, Canada and the United States, uh, and now we're beginning to see leadership from other parts of around our shared Atlantic community, and particularly noteworthy, we will have speakers today from uh, South Africa and Brazil. So we see that we have a widening and deepening taking place. But real work is taking place, and serious people are involved, and we've seen that we're getting down to the business at the mapping workshop, for example, led by the Marine Institute in Ireland in uh, Dublin last December. It was fascinating to watch this mix of ambition and practice moving together to set out what has to happen on seabed mapping uh, between the United States, Canada, and the European Union. The next phase needs to begin today, which is the doing phase, we need to launch through these uh, programs which are funded very significantly by uh, Horizon 2020 and by our international partners who are co-funding in different ways, directly and indirectly, the participation in this initiative. We need now to get on with the business of understanding, mapping, observing, uh, developing, enabling and sustainably exploring this extraordinary context, uh, our Atlantic home, which we share. The next phase, too, means looking at the political and diplomatic promise and moving towards a one Atlantic uh, future where all of the uh, countries and nations and peoples living around the Atlantic North and South, including the two poles, uh, can be part of this way of working together based on common scientific objectives, uh, political support, and an intelligent use of what are increasingly scarce financial resources. So I'd like to thank you all uh, for coming here. I think it's going to be quite a remarkable uh, couple of days. I think it's, it's, it's the beginning of another chapter in developing what is becoming a real uh, Atlantic community. I'd like to finish with a quote from, um, I, I have, as a non-marine scientist, which puts you outside the pale in these kind of meetings, I have to learn about words like bathymetric maps and so forth. Um, and so uh, I was looking around for a quote. I'm not going to talk about the, um, uh, the pelagic uh, um, bact bacteria either in the course of our, our day today, but I was looking around for a similar moment when somebody was trying to describe um, the significance of the Atlantic, uh, because the Atlantic for the first time is actually being put at the center of a phrase that we all use. We talk about our transatlantic relationship in so many different ways, and probably for the first time we're actually putting the Atlantic at the center of that. It was a quote from 1855 by um, a man called Matthew Maury, and he said, could the waters of the Atlantic be drawn off so as to expose 
the view, this great sea gash which separates continents and extends from the Arctic to the Antarctic, it would present a magnificent scene, most rugged, grand and imposing. The very ribs of our earth with the foundations of the sea would be brought to light and we should have presented to us at one view the empty cradle of the ocean. It's the cradle of the ocean from which our civilization, our commerce, our communications and everything else comes. Uh, and with this map, which I'm sure we have people in the room who can immediately decode it and say what's wrong with it and why it needs to have a much more high resolution version uh, funded in the future can explain that to us. So I'd like to finish this welcome uh, by mentioning this is a moment of what we call in the European uh, Union uh, science diplomacy. Uh, in action, and I'd like to hand over to my colleague uh, Christina Russo, who's Director for International Cooperation Research and, and Innovation, who herself and with her colleagues has been hugely helpful in making all of this happen uh, to maybe uh, introduce the international dimension. Christina, and welcome. Thank you.